Right, um, morning or afternoon. Um, it's uh, live with the leader again. Uh, I'm afraid we've had a bit of an IT issue this morning, so it's almost live with the leader. So we've been recording this and then putting it straight on YouTube. So it's not going to work quite as well as normal, but um, you know, that's life in IT. So today we've got um, Councillor Paul coming with us, who's um, a councillor from the north of the district. And he very recently had a life-changing experience, I think is the best way to say it. Um, and he's here to explain what happened to him and um, how we can all work together to make sure that um, when something major happens like this in your life, that we can all be ready to help. So I think I'll hand over to Paul. If you'd just like to tell us your story, because it is quite a fascinating one. Thank you. No, at the beginning of May, I was uh, playing walking cricket. Uh, I remember going to the, the next village where the, the game was taking place. Um, I remember going behind the, uh, the village hall and nothing after that. Uh, apparently, I bowled two overs, uh, went to field, collapsed. And um, that was the last thing I knew until four days later when I woke up in hospital. Um, fortunately, three local people acted very quickly and um, decided to carry out to, to work on me with a defibrillator. So that by the time the medical professionals arrived, they had in fact uh, just about brought me around. And I was rushed off to hospital. Um, I've always assumed that heart attacks in the past were heart attacks but this was a cardiac arrest which is quite different from heart attack I now understand with a survival rate of about 20 uh, sorry 10 percent outside hospital and there are about 30,000 cases a year in the UK outside hospital so it is quite a, a widespread problem and it can happen to anyone of any age as we saw in the recent European Championships where what the Danish footballer had a similar problem. So um, having, I now have a defibrillator fitted, um, which has been re recently reprogrammed, uh, so that if any further problems uh, take place, uh, it should put it right. But having been extremely fortunate in all that, I thought I ought to do something to try and let others benefit in the same way that I had done, because people acted quickly. Um, and it struck me that there is no single register of where defibrillators are kept at the moment. Um, and I have heard of cases in the past with people going to the wrong villages locally because they didn't know there was a closer one. And it struck me that the district council would be a good place to start with its website to list all the defibrillators in the district. So if anyone in Malden Hills has a similar problem, they can get on their phone and find out where the nearest one is um, and uh, hopefully save more lives. Uh, mm -hmm. Council has uh, fortunately and I think very widely agreed to do that. Uh, working with its partners it has worked with before in trying to help this issue and uh, that is now being being sorted out uh, and hopefully uh, others will will follow us after that and uh, it can be spread so that uh, as I said before we save more lives. I think um, as councillors we are well and officers as well we were just all incredibly shocked when we heard because like you say we, you seem fit and healthy there's no way anyone would have thought it would have happened so I think what it's done for all of us and what's so great about it is that you're now trying to help other people and you're using that you know horrendous experience to to help others is it it really brought it all home to me but actually I, I don't know where the nearest defibrillator is I think it's on the shop and would I have the confidence to do that would I know what to do and do you think the people that helped you, had they had training or did they just use the defib? Uh, they, well, they knew there was a defibrillator at the village hall. Um, mm -hmm. They used their, their common sense. Um, yeah. I, I think one had had some training a long time ago, um, but it was, a, it was a big shock for them as well. I didn't yeah. have to deal with it. Yeah. I'm sorry to have to put them through it. <laughs> And do you think that have they gone, have they, you know, do you think they'll go and get training now? Or do you think they'll uh, take I think more people doing? will. Um, I've a lot of local villages, um, having heard what's happened, uh, have, it's given them a bit of a shock as well. And yeah. other parishes um, around the area are now looking at getting more defibrillators in. Yeah. Um, I think when it happens to someone you know, it perhaps brings it home a bit more than uh, yeah. just a, a, a set of statistics. Yeah, it does. Uh, certainly for me, and that is see. working. Yeah, these defibrillators everywhere, but well, I don't know if they're ever used. I don't know whether they're needed. And now you kind of think, well, actually, no, because I know Paul mm. and I know he wouldn't be here if they hadn't had a defibrillator. And it's hugely important. So I think it, that is, you know, it's scary and it's terrible you had to go through it. But you probably have 
made an impact on a, quite a lot more people than you realise right across the district. It affected me more than everybody else because everyone else had the shock and the worry about it. I, I was out of it for several you days really afterwards. You didn't even know what was going on. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, for the rest of us, it was just like, how does this happen? I can't believe it. So yeah, and I think the fact that we've, you know, you've come to the council and asked them to do all of this and, and you know, it's brilliant that we've made a start already. So I've got a few bits of information here that um, I've been provided with. So the, the campaign to register all defibrillators um, it's something that the, the British Heart Foundation is working with the ambulance services throughout the UK on a project called The Circuit. So if your organisation has a defibrillator, then please register it with The Circuit. If someone dials 999 and needs a defib, they will only be directed to the nearest one and given the code of the cabinet if it's registered with The Circuit. If it's not registered, it will not be used um, and could be lost. So, you know, in Paul's situation, if they hadn't known it was there, then that, that wouldn't have helped. Um, the small details of the circuit can be found at www.thecircuit.uk, but I'm sure if you just email the council, we can help you with that. Um, the other um, issue is about to raise the general awareness of how easy it is to use a defibrillator. And I think, you know, as Paul's just said, they, they didn't know what they were doing, but they managed to use it and very sensibly um, saved Paul's life. Uh, the British Heart Foundation has a lot of information and videos um, on how to use a defibrillator, but I think they talk you through it. So if you ring 999, they'll talk you through what you do and how to do it. So it's not about being scared. Um, if you just can't, you know, you don't know what to do. I think it's better to have a go, isn't it? And, um, and take the advice. And then there's, the other is, is to raise an awareness of, about how to do CPR. And quite interesting in a meeting the other day, um, the chair of our council, Cynthia Palmer, said that her husband had had defibrillator training, but she hadn't. So in actual fact, uh, uh, CPR training rather, he, she said, well, she could, uh, he could bring her back, but she couldn't do it for him. So she thought she'd better go and get some training. So I think it's about us all thinking, actually, you know, we don't know who it's going to happen to. And, and as Paul said, it was that young footballer, wasn't it? That mm. the same thing occurred, that it's any age. And I think is this, it happens to a lot more young people than we realise. Uh, a fair number of young people die each year because mm. they, uh, they just don't get the not brought round. No, no, which I think is incredibly important. Mm. So the scary statistic that I've been provided with here is a defib will only work successfully if it's used within three minutes of someone's heart stopping beating or after three minutes if someone has started CPR. So if you've got to get the defib from more than three minutes away, you, it's really important that we understand CPR. Um, and apparently that's because your brain styles start to die after three minutes. So um, we can all learn how to, to do CPR um, and you can find all this information on the British Heart Foundation website. Um, and Heart Start Malvern has provided all this information for us. And they, they're an incredibly important organisation in Malvern and um, doing a lot of good work. So we've, they've installed 30 public access defibs, provided free training to over 3,000 people, including local school children. Um, they're starting back up in September um, from then. So heartstartmalvern.org.uk is where we can all go and get some training so that if we're ever in that situation, that Paul found himself and we can help. So I think that would all be wonderful. So any anything else you'd like to add, Paul? No, I'm just very pleased that the district has um, followed the initiative and is, is acting as a community leader in, in trying to spread out the knowledge. Yeah. And how are you feeling now? Uh, <laughs> I'm normal? in the circumstances feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very glad to be here. I'm really glad to still be here. So I think that's the that's the real key for me is that you're using it, you know, to help other people, mm. um, which is just amazing. So thank you, Paul. I've now got a, a list of things coming up in August. So we're ready in September to do your CPR training. So in um, August, apparently it's officially summer. Not sure about that. It keeps raining, but there you go. Um, and we've got uh, Ready Steady Worcestershire is working with providers to offer a range of clubs and activities throughout the summer with Free space is available to those on free school meals. Um, Worcester Council, Worcestershire County Council webpage will give you the information for that. Malvern Hills summer activities um, we've got running across the district, and these are free to all. Sorry, did something come up on the screen? Um, and we've posted a list of activities on our Instagram page, or you can check out the Active Communities Malvern page on Facebook. Um, for more of these, uh, visit the Malvern's webpage, includes a list of fun, family friendly activities and days out. And the most exciting thing is the Lockdown Zoo Trail, which I think I might do myself, which runs until the end of August. <laughs>
Um, there's apparently 200 beaded animals on display at Malvern Library. And to accompany this is a free trail across Malvern Link Barnes Green and Great Malvern, encouraging children to look like the zookeeper because the animals apparently keep escaping and you've got to find them. And there's clues in the shop windows. So uh, maps are available for more Malvern Tourist Information Centre, Malvern Library and participating shops. Um, on a slightly more big scale, we've announced that we're going to have £150,000 in a People Make Places fund. Um, this is going to be launched in partnership with crowdfunding platform Space Hive and as a part of the overall 500,000 Connected Communities strategy. This um, will allow uh, community projects to come forward. Um, it's going to run for three years with six rounds. So the maximum amount pledged to a project will be £20,000 or 50% of the total project costs. So this is going to allow um, organisations, businesses, parish councils, local residents groups to come forward with, with ideas that are going to make their community better and stronger um, and hopefully gain their support. So, you know, residents can donate as little as two pounds. Um, we hope to get businesses involved. So I think that's something really positive coming out of COVID to uh, get our communities going again. We've also still got our Ticket to Ride Fund, which is based on community transport, um, all sorts of ideas from electric bikes to community buses. And um, of course, there's always the ward member budgets as well, which we use to support community initiatives. So I think this year I've bought the brownies some more books and um, some money towards a toilet for our local church. And I can't remember something else. Paul, what have, you, have you spent your ward budget on anything yet? Uh, I haven't yet. No, I'm still uh, still thinking what to do it on. I know. Uh, no, it's quite exciting, though. Some mm. of the best are daffodils. I think I'm buying daffodils to go in the road verges. Yeah. But it's nice to be able to do some little small things for your community. I like to spread it around as much as possible around the ward. Yeah, yeah. So don't like to go too early. No. And you get all competing competing things, yeah. don't you? I've got the brownies and the rainbows all wanting the money. And, yeah. Ah, and the next thing on the list is the Great Malvern Gin Festival, which is taking place on the 20th to the 22nd of August across the independent licensed premises in the town. So that's a new one. Gin's not my favorite thing, I have to say, but I might just go and give it a go. Do you like gin, gin there, Paul? Uh, no, I, I had an unfortunate experience when I was a lot, lot younger, so uh, I tend not yeah, to drink gin. I was, was going to say that myself. <laughs> I once drank it when I was 18 and I've never been again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's very similar for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's very, very fashionable these days. Apparently they do it all with different flavours. It's not just gin flavour, so I'm sure it's much better. But I would encourage everyone to go and do that, apart from Paul and I. Um, we've got the Town Centre Support Grants, which are going to be launched. Um, that's uh, £1,500 match funded to help our shops uh, with new shop fronts, marketing plans, branding, digital activity. Uh, we've also drafting the Town Centre Transformation Plans, so that's going to be a huge consultation exercise to see what the future of our uh, town centres is going to be. How do we evolve from COVID? How do we keep them vibrant? How do we bring tourists in? So I think that's going to shape the future of uh, town centres. We've got the Future Workforce Programme, which is pulling together all the activity around jobs and skills with pages for businesses, young people and parents. So I think this is a really good opportunity for young people who maybe just left school or you're wondering what to do to make use of that. And then finally, there's the Priory Park plans in the play area that's coming forward. We're um, just in the final stages of designing the new play equipment and it's being designed so it fits in with the landscape. So quite a lot of the, the play equipment is gonna be specially designed. So it enhances what is a beautiful park um, and, and provides lots of natural play. And I think the area where there's a stream will be brought into it and all of that. So that's gonna be great. Uh, we've also done up the, um, the shelters there, I always call them the bus shelters, but they're not, um, painted them and redone them. So those are looking really nice and fresh. We've been planting wildflowers um, in certain areas. And the next big stage is going to be the pond where we're going to have to um, get the fish out somehow because we want to, <laughs> the top pond needs um, needs fixing, but we've not been able to do that because the moorhens have nested twice. So now nesting season's over, we're going to clear all the silt out that, fix the waterfall. The waterfall won't help aerate the rest of the pond and then we want to get several decades worth of silt um, out of the bottom pond but of course we've got to do that really carefully because we don't want to upset the fish or the ducks so that's quite an ecological project in itself but once it's done we'll be able to plant lots of uh, reeds and things at the edges so that'll help aerate the water which will keep the silt down in the future so that's, that's a big exciting project and I think that might be it oh and outdoor cinemas Hopefully coming soon, watch this space.
So there you go. So that, that is the end of Life with a Leader. Anything else you'd like to add, Paul? Uh, no, thank you very much for the opportunity to, um, to spread the word. No, I think it's brilliant. And thank you ever so much for, for joining us. Mm, thank you.